Hey everybody, today I want to talk about the Beatles song Tomorrow Never Knows and specifically the different mixes that are available of Tomorrow Never Knows and I'm going to talk about the officially released mixes. Now I know there are a few um, acetate versions uh, of Tomorrow Never Knows that contain slightly different mixes out there but those are on the bootleg market. So today I'm just going to talk about the officially released mixes of Tomorrow Never Knows and of course I'm not talking about the uh, take one of Tomorrow Never Knows which was released on Anthology 2 also released again slightly longer slightly different mix on uh, the Revolver Super Deluxe uh, Edition box set as well. What I'm talking about is the uh, version of Tomorrow Never Knows that was released on Revolver uh, in 1966 uh, and there are currently four versions available and I will show you or tell you rather where each of them where you can find each of them as far as uh, vinyl goes. First off there is the original there are two uh, two original rather mono mixes of uh, Tomorrow Never Knows uh, this is the most common one this happens to be a 2014 mono uh, remaster of Revolver and it, which sounds great by the way I've talked about this a lot on my channel um, this contains the mono version of Revolver that most people are familiar with so that's the first version the other version of the mono version of Revolver uh, is now officially available it has always been officially available since 1966 but it was much harder to come by now it's much easier to get because it comes within this uh, Super Deluxe Edition box set but it is a uh, Revolver uh, RM11 mono mix and this is the mix that was initially uh, released on early early UK mono pressings of Revolver but uh, at the last minute George Martin decided that he he preferred the other mono mix that I previously just talked about that's readily available uh, over RM11 so RM11 became a bit of a rarity because only I don't know how many thousand um, initial early pressings of that got out but they did get out uh, and those became very very collectible they still are uh, but those are the two mono mixes of Tomorrow Never Knows that are available so we'll call it uh, RM11 which is the one you can find uh, on early pressings and within this box set and then the more common mono uh, 66 I'll call it uh, a version of Tomorrow Never Knows then there are two stereo uh, versions of mono mix. <laughs> wow, that was confusing. There are two stereo mixes of Tomorrow Never Knows that are available officially, and those are the original 1966 stereo version of Tomorrow Never Knows. This this happens to be a mid 70s uh, stereo um, repress. Uh, this was cut by Harry T. Moss. This is a, a UK pressing and it's one of the ones I think sounds very very good. This has the original 1966 version of Tomorrow Never Knows and then there is of course the brand new well a year a year ago at least brand new uh, 2022 stereo remix of Tomorrow Never Knows that you can find on again in this box set this Revolver Soup Deluxe Edition uh, and that remix was done by Giles Martin so what I want to do is I want to talk about um, all four of those mixes uh, and uh, tell you which one is my favorite, my go-to of all of the mixes. Now I'm going to start with my least favorite, uh, and I'm sure that comes as no surprise. My least favorite of all the mixes is the brand new Giles Martin 2022 Stereo Remix. Now I don't hate this mix, uh, but I also don't love it. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of on the fence with it I'm like kind of right in the middle there are parts of it that I think are really cool I love um, obviously uh, it's there's you can hear a lot more definition in all all of the instruments especially the drums especially the bass which is usually the case with the Giles Martin remix the drums and the bass uh, have definitely been uh, enhanced uh, and that's a cool thing Unfortunately, I don't like the way the drums are are placed within the mix. So he's doing like kind of an interesting stereo thing with Ringo's drums where there's that very famous groove, of course, for Tomorrow Never Knows. I won't even try to sing it, but I'm sure you could all think of it in your head. But there's that groove and then there's like that stuttery bit where this almost fell over, so I'm going to lean it against my knee, where uh, 
it's almost like the after it, the added bit on on the snare that goes like the ta whatever. He has that pan, so he has the normal drum set right in the middle, but then there's like that that little flammy thing. I think that's what it's called, something like that, like a flam. After that, and he has that pan over to the right, and it just sounds kind of weird to me. Um, to me, the drums, I, I get that that was, I don't even know if that was an overdub, to be honest with you. I think Ringo played all that in, in, one, in one take. So it just seems weird that that little extra bit is panned over to one side. It should all, the drums should all be in the middle for me. That's at least how I feel with Tomorrow Never Knows. The other thing that I don't really like about the Giles Martin uh, remix is the way he handles the tape loops. The tape loops are, are arguably one of the most iconic uh, parts of Tomorrow Never Knows, and he pans them like crazy again in this new mix, and it's just distracting to me. I get like, I guess I kind of maybe get panning them slightly to just give them a, a space of their own each each tape loop. But to pan them individual tape loops as they're happening, it just, it just kind of doesn't really work for me. Um, so I'm not a big, big fan of the Giles Martin remix, uh, stereo remix of Tomorrow Never Knows. But again, I don't hate it, even though what I just said sounds like I don't really like it. I don't hate it. Uh, and maybe over time I will get used to it or more used to it. But as of now, I don't like it all that much. Um, and that kind of goes for the whole, the whole remix of the Revolver album that Giles Martin did. I, I don't love it. Um, next up, uh, my, what I will say is my third uh, favorite uh, mix of Tomorrow Never Knows. I'm going to go with the, the standard uh, um, mono version of Tomorrow Never Knows. Now, this is the one that is just readily available. Uh, it's not the early pressing one, not RM11. This is just the mono mix that was the most common back in the day. Uh, this is my third favorite uh, mix. And I think the reason that I don't quite um, love it as much as the other mono mix, RM11, is it's not quite, quite as crazy. RM11 is a, a little bit edgier, I would say, for me. Um, and I think RM11 has a lot more of the tape loops the tape loops come up in different spots, of course, but it just seems like um, with Tomorrow Never Knows, I want it to be just right on the edge of of, of chaos, is, of what I, is what I would say. And while this original mono mix is fantastic, it sounds great, um, it really thumps along, um, it's still my third favorite of the mixes of Tomorrow Never Knows. Now, for my second favorite mix, I'm sure you can probably guess. I am choosing the RM11 mono mix. Now this is the one that was on the early pressings of Revolver in the UK on the mono, uh, mono albums. And it um, now is of course readily available on the Sessions record within the Revolver Super Deluxe box set. And it is my second favorite mix and my favorite mono mix of Tomorrow Never Knows. And for all the reasons I just mentioned, uh, that it is just a little bit more out there compared to the standard mono version. And it's just, I love, I love everything about it. I love John's voice on it. I love how John's voice is even more, a little bit more out front in this, in this mix. Um, and like I previously stated, the tape loops are um, just crazier in this mix. It just hits all the right spots for me. And it's very, very cool. So glad that it's now available within this box set because it's a really, really cool version. Um, I don't personally own um, a early pressing of, of Revolver, mono, mono pressing that has this RM11 um, mix on it. Uh, I'm still searching for one. Eventually, hopefully, I'll have one in my collection. But as of now, I don't have it. That being said, before this box set came out, uh, I've had access to it because some good friends of mine have sent me needle drops, so they made a, a needle drop of their copy, of early copy of Revolver that had that mix on it, and they made a CD version of it and sent it to me. Uh, I've also heard, um, I have a friend who does own that, that particular pressing of the record. He's brought it over here. We've listened to it on, on my stereo. So I've heard it in all its glory. It is wonderful. Um, and I gotta say, I haven't had a chance to compare, obviously, the new uh, version of it that's 
not the new version, but the new pressing of it that's in this box set with an original. Hopefully I would like to do that one day, but I'm guessing they're probably pretty similar. Uh, of course, the original is an all analog uh, cut and that's gonna edge it out, of course, because you can't really beat all analog, especially when it comes to beetle pressings. So I'm sure that one is quite quite a lot better than the one in the box set, which was sourced from digital. Um, but hey, it still sounds really good uh, within this box set, I think. I, I, I blasted it on my stereo. Really, really enjoy it. And it's one of those mono mixes that doesn't sound mono. It's It almost has a 3D quality to it. Uh, and when there's a really good mono mix uh, and you get a really good pressing of it, it can sound really, really nice. That being said, it is coming from a digital source and um, I'm sure it could sound so much better if I had an original pressing of it. So that leads me now to my favorite mix and my preferred way of hearing Tomorrow Never Knows and that is the original 1966 stereo mix of Tomorrow Never Knows that happens to be on this particular uh, mid-70s UK pressing cut by Harry T. Moss. Um, I love this mix. This is the one that uh, I grew up with um, and it's the one that when I want to hear Tomorrow Never Knows at a very loud volume, which is I think the best way to listen to Tomorrow Never Knows, just turn it all the way up. Um, this is the one I want to hear. The drums just bounce, like just absolutely pound out of the speakers. The bass is amazing. John's voice is from another planet. Um, the tape loops are so beautiful and so weird and so chaotic. It's just got every single thing that I want in, in a mix of Tomorrow Never Knows. It is the one that's implanted in my brain, in my heart. It's the one that I go to and I love it so much. Um, and if it wasn't obvious enough to you now, I love the song Tomorrow Never Knows. It's one of my favorite Beatles songs just because it's so out there. Um, it's it sounds like, it still sounds like it's a futuristic recording, to me at least. It paved the way for so many bands that I love uh, now, like Radiohead and Oasis and Beck, uh, and people like that who, who got it very experimental. Uh, and the Beatles just, like they did with so many things, uh, they were one of the first to do it, and they definitely paved the way. Uh, by the way, I want to also mention that we shouldn't forget Jeff Emmerich, their amazing engineer uh, who uh, worked on the Revolver Sessions and was a very, very big part of the sound of Tomorrow Never Knows. Just the drum sound alone, Jeff Emmerich, um, he, that was, by the way, the first session he ever worked on with the Beatles where he was the sole engineer was Tomorrow Never Knows. And he got in there and mic'd the drums his own special way and they sound amazing. Um, he was a big part of the tape loops. He helped get that all together. And you can just really, really tell um, that when it went from, and by the way, their original engineer, Norman Smith, also was great, obviously. But when Jeff Emmerich took over, it was very, very apparent. And Tomorrow Never Knows, what an amazing first song to work on as an engineer. So got to give praise to Jeff Emmerich and, of course, George Martin uh, for producing the sessions and uh, adding all of his expertise to it and all that kind of stuff as well. So, yeah, the Beatles team of the four Beatles and George Martin and Jeff Emmerich were a hard team to beat uh, as far as um, just advancements in recording and um, just what can you say that hasn't already been said about the Beatles and George Martin and Jeff Emmerich. So anyway, uh, those are the four available mixes of Tomorrow Never Knows and I'd love to know in the comments below what mix is or which mix is your favorite. Maybe you prefer the mono mix, maybe you prefer RM11. Uh, maybe you like Giles Martin's Stereo Remix. Uh, I'd love to know in the comments below what you think. And uh, more videos to come. Hope you're all doing well. And uh, talk to you later. And bye for now.